it's a book that I wrote. It's now available for pre-order everywhere books are sold. Oh, this episode is sponsored by Sunsama. Stick around till the end of the video to learn more about it. Hello, brains. Is there something you want to do, but you can't find the motivation to actually do it? Are you sure that's what it is? When I was writing my chapter on motivation, which by the way, you can read already, it's a pre-order gift. Uh, I talk about it in this video here. You can actually read that chapter. I was talking to Dr. Ari Tuckman about motivation and he pointed out that motivation is generally speaking the first lever we think to pull when we want to get something done or when we want to encourage somebody that we love to get something done. But it's not always the right lever to pull because it's not always about motivation. And I found that really intriguing, so I included it in the chapter. But in this video, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into some of the reasons why we might struggle to do things that have nothing to do with motivation. I'll go into five of them here. So one of those things is a skill gap. We don't have the skills to do the thing that we are trying to do. So you can reward somebody all day. You know, you could you could give me the most amazing reward for building a rocket ship. I'm not gonna be able, be able to build a rocket ship. I don't have the skills to do it. There are a lot of times when it seems like somebody doesn't really wanna do a thing or that motivation is the issue. When there's a skill missing, you know, there's a lot of skills involved in any task. There's the skill of being able to understand what it is you're asking for and to, translate that into what you can actually do. There are certain organizational skills. There are other executive function skills. There's a lot of skills involved in completing a task. And sometimes we don't have the skills that we need to be able to effectively do it. And so we might be really motivated to do something, but not have the skill set that will help us actually do it. Another thing it could be besides motivation is a resource gap. So maybe you have the motivation to do a thing and you know how to do it, but you're exhausted or you don't have the money that you need to do the thing. There's some sort of resource that's missing. You don't have the support, you don't have the money, you don't have the energy to do the thing. So there are a lot of times where after work, I have the skill to go for a walk. I have the motivation to go for a walk. I know it's gonna be good for me. I know it's gonna be good for my baby. I really enjoy walking, but I'm exhausted. So I'm not gonna be able to do it. And yeah, could somebody pay me $500 to do it? And then maybe I would, sure. It's not an either or thing. It's not like either it's a motivation issue or it's one of these other issues. It can be both. If you have enough motivation, sometimes that can help you push past a lack of resources or a lack of skill or any number of these other things. But there are times where it's not the most effective thing in the world to do, right? Like. Nobody has to pay me $500 to go for a walk. In fact, that is arguably a waste of resources. I just need to be able to go for a walk at a time of day where I have the energy to do it. Or maybe I need a friend to go with me so that that gives me that extra boost of energy or something. So we can supplement with extra rewards or, or pull on that motivation lever, but we don't necessarily need to. That's not necessarily the most effective way to do it. Another thing that it is a lot of the time is perfectionism. It's actually a little bit counterintuitive, but sometimes I care so deeply about the thing, I have so much motivation to do a good job with something that I can't do it because I start to get perfectionistic about it. I have a video on perfectionism and anxiety that you can check out here. It's an old school video, it's one of my older ones, but it's, it's something that I've struggled with for a really long time. Just not being able to get started on something for no other reason than I really wanna do a good job, which is so ironic, right? Because if I don't get started on it, the odds of me doing a good job start to go downhill at some point because I don't have time to do an okay job and then revise it and then revise it. There is an episode that I'm supposed to be working on that I should have finished like a month ago on emotional impulsivity. I really, really wanna do this episode. I really care about it. I really wanna do a good job. I am terrified of not doing a good enough job. And so I have worked on this episode, mm, maybe a total of like four hours over the last like month and a half that I was supposed to be working on it because I care so deeply about that topic and I wanna do such a good job that it's actually hard for me to get started. It's hard for me to sit and work on it because the anxiety, that perfectionism gets in my way. I have tricks for that one. Um, most of my tricks are not working at the moment. Sometimes the perfectionism wins. If you're looking to get more done, Sunsama is a fantastic tool that can help. Not just with getting your stuff done that day or even that week, but setting and achieving long-term goals as well. My big goal for next year is to be ahead enough on content and everything else that I need to do that I can take a couple months off for maternity leave when the baby comes. 
and to get there in a way that's healthy for me, both mentally and physically. By setting weekly goals now that will get me to that goal, I'm much more likely to achieve it. With the help of Sansama, I'm able to plan out my work in a realistic way, well, more realistic, (laughs) and even get the accountability that I need to stay on track. I can post what I'm working on right to Slack, and even invite my team to see what's on my plate and add stuff I might have otherwise missed. I'm able to pull in tasks from everywhere, my email, Asana, Google Calendar, as well as add tasks and objectives that are important to me personally. I was worried I wouldn't be able to take the time off and end up working the entire time I was there, but Sansama gave me a place to plan my weeks in a way that I could make sure that anything that needed to be done got done before I left, so I can enjoy and be present for my trip. I'm excited to be able to do the same for my maternity leave, get stuff done, and even get ahead without burning out. If you'd like to check out Sansama, go to sansama.com slash a slash how to ADHD and let me know what your big goals are for next year. And remember, it's not always motivation that we're missing when we're struggling to get stuff done. Sometimes what we need is support. Another reason that it might be something other than a motivation issue. Number four is, hang on, I wrote this down for a reason. Oh my God, forgetfulness. (laughs) Sometimes we don't do the thing, not because we're not motivated to do the thing, but because we forget what our goal even was. Um, That was, that was fantastic and ironic. There are a lot of times where I have a a goal that's deep and meaningful to me and I really want to do it and then I will forget. For a lot of people with ADHD, there's this thing like things are out of sight, they're out of mind. If I don't have a reminder in my face reminding me of what my goal is, what it was that I wanted to do, I might forget that I wanted to do it. Not because I don't care about it, just because I'm distracted by other things right now. There's other things that are that are taking my attention away from this other thing and now I've forgotten about it. Uncued recall is impaired in ADHD or perspective memory, the ability to remember what it was that we wanted to do at some point in the future that tends to be impaired in ADHD. And so a lot of the time it's not a motivation issue. It's we forgot, like legit, we forgot. It's not that I don't care about this friend and don't want to call them or text them. Danny Donovan and I did an entire episode about this. Sometimes it's just we, we forgot out of sight, out of mind, right? And then the last one, so number five, is overly optimistic thinking. Sometimes we do have the motivation to do a thing, we really care about it, we fully intend to do it, but we are a little bit optimistic in our thinking. There's a a term for this that I love, which is positive illusory bias. It's this idea that we think we have time. Like, I'll, I'll totally get this thing done. I have plenty of time, when in reality, maybe we don't. In reality, the people around us might, who love us might look at us and be like, why haven't you started on this thing, right? This is really common. Like we tend to procrastinate. And part of that is because it takes a while for our brains to kick into gear. And once our brains are engaged, it's easier for us to focus. But a lot of times we are experiencing this positive illusory bias. We have this idea that we have time or that we don't need to get started yet. I didn't start trying to have kids until I was almost 40 years old um, because I was like, oh, I have time. I didn't, but that's what my brain told me. Like I was super optimistic and sometimes ADHDers can be optimistic to a fault. But part of that overly optimistic thinking is sometimes the goals that we're setting for ourselves are not at all realistic. And I think everybody deals with this to a certain extent when it comes to like New Year's goals where you you think, oh, when the New Year comes around, I'm gonna eat healthy and I'm gonna go for a run every day. And you know, you have these kind of ambitious goals, but I feel like people with ADHD do that all the time. Our goals are so unrealistic and so outside of our normal day-to-day experience that they're not actually attainable, or if they are, they're not sustainable. So I might be able to go for a run every day for a week, but if that's not something I usually do at all, if I don't like running, I can be motivated to run, I can know how to run, but that, that goal of going for a run every single day it might not be compatible with my life or my other values or my body might not want to go for a run every day. That might be a little bit much for my body too, which it definitely is right now because I'm pregnant. (laughs) But these overly optimistic, sometimes unattainable goals, sometimes that's what gets in our way. And it's like, oh, well, I just need to just need to be more motivated. I just need more discipline. Sometimes we need to adjust the goal. Sometimes we need to adjust our, our expectations of ourselves. It's not that we're not motivated enough. It's that what we're asking of ourselves is kind of ridiculous. I told an ex once, like, I look at a friend of mine who always did what he said he was gonna do and I remember going man like he's so reliable anytime he sets his mind to something he does it and meanwhile I I flake out on half the things that I do I don't finish what I start and my ex looked at me and was like okay but how many things are you trying to do 
And I realized like, wow, yeah, you're right. Because my friend would choose a realistic amount of goals and then do them. Whereas I was trying to do like 15 things a day, which was not realistic for anybody, but definitely not for me when I was getting distracted. And in addition to the 15 things I had planned that day, also coming up with a bunch of new ideas of things that I wanted to do. I was just never going to get to those 15 things. So yeah, those are those are the five things. It could be besides motivation. Again, sometimes ramping up the motivation can help you overcome some of the, the deficits in these other areas. But a lot of times it's not the best lever to pull. And sometimes no matter how hard you're pulling on that motivation lever, you're not going to be able to do the thing. It doesn't matter how much somebody pays me to build a rocket ship. I'm not going to be able to build a rocket ship. Ask yourself, is this a motivation issue? Is that the best lever to pull. It's a lever you might be able to pull, but is that the right one to pull? I think it's really helpful to uh, to think about it that way. It's been really helpful for me. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you to my brain advocates and all my Patreon brains for allowing me to make content like this and to have time to reach out to other professionals and get their insights and input. And thank you to Dr. Ari Tuckman as well for that insight because I've found it very helpful. I found it helpful while I was trying to finish writing the book and I've found it helpful in my everyday life as well. Let me know what you uh, are, are wanting to achieve and what you think might be getting in your way that is besides motivation. And if you really do think it is motivation, because sometimes that is the issue, you can check out our video on Motivation Bridge here.